Hey, thanks for joining us on Gadget Plex. I'm Dave Dufour, and behind me is Phil May from TechnoRV.com. We're talking solar, and uh, we just got done discussing some of the large style installations that can uh, go on the top of an RV that uh, can, can actually provide uh, some, some fairly substantial power for certain appliances in an RV and kind of save on the fuel running through the generator and uh, also uh, make sense if you're not hooked up to shore power in, in, uh, in many locations, such as quartzite. Isn't that pretty much a boondocking kind of event that you were at? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a boondocking capital. It's a. Um, we were there not this year, the year before. But when you go over the hill, you just see it. It's like a sea of white. It's it's quite incredible. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some pictures. We talked to Nick Russell from our uh, Just a Gypsy show about that, and and he was uh, showing, uh, talking about the, uh, you know, quartzite and the event and the fact that it's just sort of like it's sort of a little mecca. Uh, anyway, uh, but obviously, uh, I, I would imagine that that's a pretty good place. It's sort of like, uh, you know, when I was a kid, they used to show cars on the Bonneville salt flats, you know, that they used to test cars out there. And it's sort of like, this seems like it might be like a great testing ground for RV technology and people trying to come up with new solutions for things. I don't know, maybe that's not true, but uh, at least for solar, it's Yeah, no, be. it is, You're right. And there's, there's a lot of experience there. You know, that um, we're walking around the, the, there's a big exhibition in Quartzsite. And so, you know, just in the hall that we were in, or the tent, there was maybe three or four um, different companies offering solar uh, all types of different solar installations and so on, which is kind of unusual. I, I, we go to a lot of shows, and you, you don't often see anybody offering solar, let alone three or four different ones. So if, right. if you're interested, that's the place you need to be. And then, of course, you have the benefit of being able to test it once you've bought it, which is right. uh, kind of a good thing, too. Right, yeah, and, then, and if it doesn't work, you can go back to the vendor because he's still <laughs> there. <don't> go. <laughs> that's good. Okay, well, um, what uh, we, have, uh, we have some sort of... Uh, I, I don't say miniature, but smaller uh, scale kinds of solar devices that you can use to recharge certain devices or power uh, smaller devices. What what do we have to start with? Yeah, sure. So so um, that's this is the other end of the uh, the scale here. It's, it's yeah. called the Pico. Um, this is just one example of a, a small um, uh, portable solar powered device now um just if you keep people are scratching their head going well isn't that like an oxymoron how are you supposed to you stand in the sun and hold this well inside just like a the setup in the in the um in the rv um has the big batteries this has a little tiny battery inside of here um which is what the solar panel on the front there that you can see charges up so the idea is that you can it's like carrying a spare tank of gas for your for your phone or your gps device this is the one just to give you an idea of what the size looks like. Mm -hmm. um, it's oh, there you, uh, go. you know maybe maybe four inches, five inches long, very light. Mm -hmm. um, you can just keep it in your pocket or your handbag, and when you need a, uh, you know, if you're out and you forgot to sell, uh, charge your cell phone, um, you know, you're walking around town or uh, hiking or something, and you just use the USB cable uh, charger that it comes with, pop mm -hmm. it into your phone, and it, you know it'll it'll do a good job of um, at least charging up your phone to maybe between 50 and 70. Five percent is what we've uh, we've experienced. Right. So it's uh, it, it's a pretty useful thing to have. Well, now does it do that kind of? Is it fairly immediate charge, or how does it? Or do you, do you can you plug in, start using your phone just like it was plugged into the wall, or or not? It we had, it's similar to it into the wall so it'll take a couple of hours to charge a, um, a phone from let's say zero to 75 percent um, I mean bear in mind this has a battery as well as your phone has a battery so you know you, it's it's not going to completely charge your um, cell phone because as, as it becomes charged you end up with this sort of competition between who has the most charge between your, this device gotcha. and your cell phone so uh -huh. um, there's, there's always that going on so you you know you, you need to be realistic in terms of what to expect um, but that's why I, you know, I, I, I think it was good to start with the um, with the big roof-mounted ones because, in terms of bang for the buck and the amount of total charge, then, you know, they they are just, you know, they are the best, and and you know, you'd be best charged if you have those. They, you'd be better off charging any device um, using your inverter and, and what have you. But when you're out and about, then you get into this these range of products, um, yeah. which can can really help. Um, you know, if. I don't know if you've ever been there and you desperately need to call somebody right, and you, you yeah. can't because your, your phone's dead. It's or, a frustrating yeah. experience. Or, or you're talking really fast because you know your phone's going to die any second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> spit yeah. it out, spit what it out, you know. Is better. <laughs> you're talking to someone at the other end who has the slows and you know your phone is going to die before you get the final combination to the treasure map, right? Something, anyway. Yeah, um, right. There you go. That's the typical movie scenario. What's, what's next? What other, what's our next device here? 
here that we want to look at for charging for power on the so, road. So moving up a little, little bit, um, and and this is um, it's a little bit. Oh, oh there's just an application. That's another Pico, the Pico, yeah. That's the Pico again, a, yeah. An iPhone. Um, so if we uh, and that's that's one we can come back to. But this what this will do is this connects to the, the freeloader device. Inside here is a couple of AA batteries, uh -huh. so um, that are that are rechargeable. And so what you can do is use this to kind of supplement the amount of storage that you've got from your little from your solar um, charger. Okay. If we flip so to the next. And the next one has uh, the, there's the actual charger. There we go. That's right. That, so so this one here is called the the um, freeloader, and. Um, you can see it's it's sort of the device next to the camera on the right hand side. It right, has yeah. um, two solar panels, and, and it, so this one that I was showing before had one. This has two. It's got twice the battery size, so it's it's kind of beefier all round. But the thing that the other thing that makes it um, pretty much unique actually is that it has what's called a cam caddy. That's that little gizmo down below the camera, mm -hmm. and the cam caddy will accept the rechargeable batteries from most um, cameras like you know digital oh. slr cameras or video cameras so you know if you're kind of a keen photographer and you, you you're out like in hiking or, or backpacking or um you know a horseback or something and you and you stay away for any significant period of time this can um be really invaluable in um in, in helping keep those batteries charged up now you know charge time from like say there's th you know a couple of double a's in there but you know assuming you've got a pretty bright sun what's uh, you know, charge time is about like um, it's actually about eight eight hours. Okay. So it's, you know, it's it's not an insignificant amount of time. So you have to obviously schedule that in, and it it might be the thing that do if you were camping, you you could leave it out in the sun all day, and then when you come home, then you'd be able to plug it in, and charge your camera back up again after yeah. it's been charging all day. That's yeah. That's it's it's, it's not like your cell work. phone where you set it up and you plug it in, you charge overnight because obviously it doesn't work overnight. <laughs> but that would be like my yeah, first. Right. Yeah. Oh, you know, when we get back, we'll just plug it in. But it's only going to, you know, you want you, you've got a. It's really a. So you have you have to have spare batteries that are being charged while you're out using another pair, and that, that kind of is the way it can work, especially if you're out for that's, a while. That's yeah, cool. That's, that's the way of thinking. But and if um, I don't. Courtney can flip to the cameras. There's an example of a, a couple of people um, who've taken some shots using the freeloader. Uh, there was this. Um, okay, that's it. It will also charge cell phones uh, as well as GPS devices. There's there's a, a shot from a, uh, a mountain climber. He's just uh, at the foothills of Everest there, so not a lot of wall outlets to plug into there. And the next one is a kind of more my location. Uh, that looks like some great diving there. Yeah. Um, that's in Portugal. But it, but again, just the, the same deal. You're out. You're away from from um, uh, all of uh, all, all of the technology, and you, but you need a charge. That's great. Okay, yeah, I, I, that that makes me want to uh, dive right in there. As a matter of fact, that looks like the <laughs> Medi Mediterranean or the maybe the maybe the Bahamas or something like that. Okay, what's uh, what's next? What el what else do we have here for for charging? This is uh, I think our next one's a little bit further up the scale. Yeah, a little bit more at the scale. So, so those ones, but you know, are just price points. They started about thirty for the Pico, up to about a hundred for the Freeloader. Mm -hmm. Going up the scale again for a couple of hundred, we're getting into um, the uh, Voltaic backpack. Um, it's kind of a nice concept. So, if you're a big hiker or backpacker, or even just you know walking around towns, um, whilst you're doing that, those little solar panels on the back are charging up um, some um, rechargeable batteries. Just the same concept right. that, that are built into the backpack. So you can have your iPod plugged in, or when you get back, you've always got some juice to be able to to recharge your your portable devices. Mm -hmm. It's kind of kind of a neat idea, rather than um, you know being able to bring that with you and utilize the the free space on your back. Well, now, okay, now how many devices can you charge at a time with something like that? I mean, can you can you split the power coming out of that and have like maybe a cell phone and a and an iPod and maybe a camera battery, all three going, or is it not really? Are you better off doing things kind of one at a time? Yeah, you're probably better. You might be able to split and do a couple, maybe an iPod and one other thing, just because they don't take as much juice. But generally, they're they're one at a time. Mm -hmm. So you you do one and then the other. Now that brings up and another. Then, well, was, go, sorry, go ahead. Well, well, it brings up another point. I was looking at the backpack, and I'm wondering, is it um, how in ter in terms of the 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 how delicate is that panel on the back uh you know obviously you, you don't want to fling it around real hard but is it the sort of thing that is going to be uh somewhat shock uh sensitive or you know when you're walking going through brush do you are you better off covering it up or i mean how i mean what's the is it well protected or not um so so we haven't 
tested one of those, and I, I'd, I'd really like to, so, but we just haven't got around to it. But from what I understand and from reading the reviews, it's pretty well um, um, protected. It's, okay. um, you know, the, the, the panels themselves are, are, are hard, so they're not going to crack or break. And they uh, have done a good job, I think, of having a good protective covering over the, okay. over the actual panels themselves to stop them getting scratched. So, um, you know, from, from what I understand, they're good. But it's, as I say, I'd, I'd love to be able to, to have a little, uh, little test of one of those. That's to, looks like a fun gadget. Okay. All right, we have a, we have, you have a laptop charger here that we're going to look at as well. Uh, and that's, uh, we have yeah, that's right. We get asked a lot on the booth. People will look at the, our chargers and say, hey, gee, wouldn't it be great? Will these charge a laptop? <clears throat> well, you, I mean, you've got to remember, laptops take a lot of power. I mean, there are, you know, 130, 140 watts of power, which, um, you remember those big solar panels that we were looking at on the, on the right. RV? I mean, that would take one of those to run it continuously. Gotcha. Um, not very practical to carry one of those around with you. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, the company here, um, Solaris, what they've done is they've utilized some of the thin film technology that's, that's just come out that's very new for solar panels. And, and these are um, now flexible solar panels. And what you can do is this is like a, a little roll um, that you roll up. Well, I say little. When you unroll it, it's about four feet in, in width, I think, if I remember. So it's, it's mm -hmm. you know, pretty sizable. And um, <clears throat> that provides almost enough power to be able to um, run your laptop continuously or to be able to, um, to charge it if, if the battery needs charging up at, uh, you know, in the evening. So a pretty, uh, you know, pretty, pretty good and pretty powerful uh, portable solar panel. But then you pay for it. I mean, that's, you know, it's looking at like 300 bucks, um, right. even at a discounted rate for, for, for one of those. So it's not something that, you know, that you would sneeze at. You really need to have the that, you know, a real reason to want to do that. Right, I was going to say, but I mean, $300, of course, you know, laptop batteries aren't cheap. You, you replace a couple, three of those, and, you know, you're, you may be there anyway. Of course, this isn't really a battery replacement, but, you know, that gives you kind of a, a reference point. You know, I've seen batteries for laptops at about 100, so uh, it... You yeah, know, yeah, that's that ballpark. Right. On the other or hand... Or if you're traveling in different countries, you know, I have a friend who's going to Europe, and... I looked at his bag, and by the time you packed your, your laptop, your spare laptop battery, the charger, and the um, uh, uh, the, the different plugs for, for one for UK, one for um, France, another one for Italy, all of which have different um, uh, uh, wall outlet uh, sockets, then, you know, it, it, something like that starts to look a lot more uh, attractive. Right, yeah, yeah, it becomes, it becomes, maybe you've got one solution instead of three or four. And, and of course, we're all, we all have the experience, you know, regardless of which of these we buy, we've always got that experience of uh, all these devices, all these different chargers, uh, and, uh, and sometimes no standardization, and sometimes it's nice to have one thing that you can go to for a lot of different uh, devices, too. So, all yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're going to be uh, coming back. We're going to talk about yet another portable power option, which you're probably pretty familiar with, but we want to uh, kind of get to it because it may be something that's yet another consideration for you, uh, and that's the good old battery. And we'll be back with more on that here on GadgetPlex. Got a question or comment for GadgetPlex's Phil May? Send him an email at gadgetplex at rvnn.tv or leave a voicemail for Phil at 877-578-RVNN, extension 703. Follow RV Newsnet on Facebook and Twitter, and you can receive text messages to alert you when we're streaming live by texting. RVNN to 72727. That way, you can join us live in the chat room, ask questions, and become part of the RV Newsnet family. Remember, any photos or other material submitted to us become the property of RV Newsnet and cannot be returned. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad.